prophecy and fantasy. The past, the future, and the dreaming moment between are all one country, living one immortal day. To know that is wisdom, to use it is the art. The words are Clive Barker's, one man industry of the fantastique. His books, movies, and illustrations are reaching more people than anyone who has ever attempted to navigate the dark canals of the mind. One might even say that Clive Barker is bent on scaring the hell out of everyone. Give me that box! Give me that box! We have such sights to show you. most important event was being born. What an what a extraordinary little radical experience that is. When I first started to publish books, and I knew that I'd signed the contract, and I knew that my books were going to be published, I would wake up every morning and think, my books are going to be published. I'm going to be in print. And it was like a total reassessment of who I was. I am telling my life every time I write a page. My fiction is my confession. Everything that was ever important in my life is written. I'm putting it down, that's what I do. And the more absurd and ridiculous and rococo and baroque the imaginings, the closer it is to me. When I was a kid, the escape from the self was into a world of absolutes. See, I was never really terribly interested in the fiction which I could identify with, with the exception of Peter Pan. And I identified, and still do, wholly with Peter Pan. The characters in, in the Greek myths, for instance, which were really the first myths that I looked at seriously, are not troubled by personality. They're into some more absolute place. And that was always my, uh, that was always what fascinated me. We don't really know what Oedipus or Orpheus feels about their lives. We don't much care whether they clean up after them when they've strewn clothes around their bedrooms. We don't know how well they brush their teeth. We don't care. What we care about is that the adventure that they're involved in touches us mythologically and um, I will do all that I need to to convince an audience of the reality of the character who is about to take the adventure and no more I'll just say okay now you know this about this person this is their name this is their parental situation this is the house in which they live at the beginning of Weave World here is a young man who keeps pigeons the pigeon escapes the man follows the pigeon, the adventure begins. I was a caesarean birth. Uh, my mother nearly died, and so did I. And from that trauma comes all other traumas. There's a line at the beginning of the cabal. I was born alive, isn't that punishment enough? I wanted a box, not just any box. It opens doors, doors to the places of heaven <laughs> or hell. I'll do anything you want. Anything. You gave me an experience beyond the limits. Hellraiser, There Are No Limits, a film by Clive Barker.
I believe that we have to preach to the unconverted. I believe we have to get under the wire. I believe we have to be making movies and writing books which run the risk of being dismissed by critics in order to get to the people who don't think that they like metaphysics, but really do. And if that means that we um, fret a little bit because Siskel and Ebert don't like us, well, we fret. Big deal. Time is kind to generic work. Time is very kind. If we cast a casual glance at the, of the year 2000 over the images, some of the prime images that have shaped and obsessed our culture in, in the hundred years that preceded it, we will find images that at the time were probably not thought to be particularly important. We'll have King Kong with Faye Ray in his hands lowering over the skyscrapers of New York. We'll probably have Karloff at the door looking mean, moody, and magnificent. We'll have Mickey Mouse. Popular culture provides images over and over again which move us and touch us in a very fundamental way. And very often those images are dismissed as being mere populism. There's a real danger if the fantastique takes too seriously the problem of trying to convince the audience of the rational livelihood of the reality it's trying to present with the consequence that it kills the celebratory element, kills the carnival element, which should, at its best, erupt in a, a totally irrational way. I think the fantastique is a force of nature. trained as an artist, so the idea of actually doing this all the time, of actually working, making the images, the idea of making characters on the page makes great sense to me. This is not very pretty, okay, the whole, you know, that, that, that you know, it's, it's hard, but the, um, I mean, I, that seems to me to be just a much more interesting thing to look at than that. This looks hard and unromantic. <laughs> and I'm actually quite romantic about the process of writing. I'm quite romantic about the process of art, actually. I mean, I, have a, I think I have a, a very 19th century idea of what art is for. <laughs> the idea of us as, uh, as playthings of some vast and ancient race of horribly sentient beings, which I think is a bunch of tosh. Um, I think finally these fictions lead, should lead us back to our humanity. On the comic book side of things, mm. just to switch gears again, uh, how much active involvement do you have in tapping the vein? A lot. Uh, I always, uh, I always love comic books. And so now we've got the Hellraiser comic. Have you seen the Hellraiser comic? The hype line on, on uh, Hellraiser is that I think something like Stories that the stories the films would you could never put on film or something like that. And it's true, the MPAA would would say would simply never allow you to commit this stuff to celluloid. <laughs> seriously committed to. The comics, of course, stand for themselves. And what I said to the people who made these things, I said, don't be too bound by the fact that this is an adaptation. Make it itself and there really is some remarkable stuff. 
And I was delighted by the way that John Bolton adapted in the Hills of Cities for Tapping the Vein, a very difficult story to transfer to visual form. I thought he achieved some remarkable images. I was at the Fangoria convention over last weekend. Eight-year-olds were coming up with Tapping the Vein in one hand and a copy of the Books of Blood in the other. Uh, a bit uh, extreme for such a young kid. It is extraordinary how, but you know, if they're going to read, uh, if, if, if it means people are going to read, I love that. Uh, too few people are reading. When I was a kid, I would build those Aurora models, remember, like, Sure, you know, I used to build those. It wasn't they great? And now uh, I get sent through the post the boxed pinhead kit. Mm -hmm. And now it's, uh, it's wonderful. <laughs> Things come.